I have a classic demo that we saw at a, one of our first ChemWest meetings called Dynamite Soap. It's a product we've been working on forever. And I'm going to have uh, Tanya come up and help me with this, because I do need one other person to help me with this. Yeah, I've even got some goggles. Oh, this Tanya. <laughs> I'm confusing. I'm con even confusing myself. You know, that was my motto. If you can't teach them, confuse them. Yeah. I've got some safety goggles. They match your eyes. And for helping out, I have the original Diving Tony in the package with a coupon for 50 cents. When I saw one of these Diving Tonys, it must have been, they were in, in uh, Tony the Tiger cereal. I don't eat that stuff. <laughs> but I called Kellogg's and said, I'm a science teacher. These make a great demonstration. Can you send me all the ones you have left since your thing is over? They did. I got four or 500 of these. And now they go online for $10 on eBay. Yes. <laughs> and, but the super thing is I've been giving them out to teachers for the last 20 some years. All right, you got one. You got a diving Tony. And the diving Tony in case, I don't know if they explained how that works. The diving Tony, he's got a little orifice. No, that doesn't sound good. In the bottom, it's hollow. <laughs> and then when you squeeze the bottle, water gets pushed up. Tony becomes more dense, and he sinks. So this is, this is, this is the thing I've been working on called dynamite soap. It's the fuel of the future. It's hydrogen and oxygen mixed together in a two-to-one stoichiometric ratio, which means a lot to your students, I'm sure. Um, so it's got lots of energy trapped in there. This will be the fuel of the future because it doesn't produce a greenhouse gas when it burns. Now, some of you are going, <laughs> but it's hydrogen, it's explosive. And if you ask a kid about hydrogen and being explosive, you know, why, why don't they use hydrogen as a fuel? No one knows, your teachers. Because it burns. That's what the kids will say, it burns. I go, yeah, that's right, you want a fuel that doesn't burn. That would be useful. Uh, <laughs> And I said, you know, you probably came here in a car or a bus, and there's, you know, 20 gallons of volatile hydrocarbon underneath your back seat. No, that's not dangerous at all. You know, hydrogen, what happens with hydrogen if it's used as a fuel? I mean, it's going to go up. It may burn, but really, compared to gasoline, it's probably not as dangerous. These match your goggles. To show you that there, to get hydrogen, the problem is not that it burns, but there is no free hydrogen on the earth. You have to get it off of something else like uh, water or methane or alcohol or something. You have to rip it off, and that takes energy. And if we can find a cheap way of doing that, that's a good thing. Right now, I think Argonne Lab, I think, is working on a process using algae to strip hydrogen off of water. Now, LG's got a lot of good things going for it. One, it doesn't have a union. That would make some governors happy. Um, sorry, a little, little in-joke for Illinois and Wisconsin. Um, it's a, it's a right-to-work product. All right. If you can get them to do it, they'll do it for free. And then you'll have all this hydrogen. Maybe the fuel of the future. But to show you how this is going to work, we're going to use this, and we're going to put some in your hands. Uh, and then I'm going to just light this little match here. I may need this, too, and you got your safety goggles on. And we're going to see that this stored energy, which we call potential energy, is stored in there. Oh, but wait. Flynn told me to have you hold up your hands. Yeah. Hold up your hands oh, like this. Yeah, got it. Got it. There are ten fingers there. <laughs> All right. The lawyers and Flynn said to do that. In my class, 90% is an A. Now, <laughs> I'll just put this bucket here so the water can go in there and any other parts. Um, I'm going to put this in your hand. And the count of pi. Now, do you know I use pi? I'm not rational. 
Okay, <laughs> sorry. Cup it in there. I'm just gonna put this in there. You people in the front row may wanna cup your ears. Yeah, don't stick your fingers in them because if you stick your fingers in them, it'll go right into your brains and they'll shoot out your nose. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna put this in there. Just this hydrogen, oxygen, gas, two to one ratio. Oh, that's a nice big bubble. Did you notice that? All right, you've got your diving Tony. You're alive. Did that hurt at all? No, I'm great. No, no. It, if you leave it open, the explosion is not contained. Now, if you have that special kid you want to invite up, have him hold it like, <laughs> like that. That's, but that's, that's up to you. It has nothing to do with me. Thank you very much. Now, we're going to see a clip. Uh, I don't know if they could play the clip uh, with... We couldn't get well, the clip of this on okay, the Letterman show. Okay, take my coat off. But this is the one that followed the dynamite soap on the Letterman show. I, will, I won't lie to you, this is with steroids. <laughs> Disappearing ink on you here. You ready for this? Oh, sure. I, my life is in your hands, doctor. Okay. <laughs> I make this disappear because it's an acid based indicator. I have a little CO2. That went downhill from there. It's for real. All right, so here we have a 55-gallon drum. And in my write-up, I suggest that you put it on a hot, hot plate, or actually, I put it on a Coleman stove, and it works great. Put about a gallon of water in. It starts out in the, in the directions. It says you can use a pop can, and then you can use a gallon can, and then you can use a five-gallon can, and eventually you could use a 55-gallon can like this. Um, if, if you could find one, it might be a little difficult. And I'm just putting some Teflon paste on there so I make a good seal. And it works better with hot water, but they don't like propane in this building. Now, you may not know why they don't like propane, but some of you may. Back when I was in college, somebody was doing some welding at McCormick Place what they now call the old McCormick Place. <laughs> the former McCormick Place. They were using a propane torch for fitting pipes or something, and they set the building on fire and burned the whole place down. Uh, since then, they don't like a lot of propane in this building. So we're going to try this with a vacuum pump. With hot water, it's kind of neat, because you never know when it's going to go. So we've got a, a good two-stage Flynn vacuum pump here, 55-gallon drum. And in every square inch of this uh, can, there is, I can do this, 14.7 pounds per square inch. We're about sea level right here. Every square, of course, the same pressure on the inside and the outside, which is why it's not doing anything right now. So we'll hook it up to the vacuum pump and turn this sucker on. See, I gotta take the cap off. We discovered that. And I may need goggles, it's not certain. This is an experiment. 
if I've got a good seal, something interesting may happen. Uh, especially if I could find the on-off switch. Here it is. Uh-oh. I'm feeling depressed. Where's that liquid nitrogen, Bill? Maybe we could cool it down to speed it up a bit. Maybe that's probably good enough, Bill. All right, there we go. The nice thing about hot water, the nice thing about the, the hot water, though, is It'll implode even faster than that, than just the vacuum pump. Um, but I, again, we couldn't use propane in here. Ta-da! And for, you can have your students do a calculation on how much pressure this would actually be under. And so, uh, weird science, we had a motto. And I don't know if any of you remember when we used to, Bob and I and Dwayne used to be doing weird science. Our motto was, we don't clean up. <laughs> so is, I thank you for being here. Is there anything more, Mike? You're the uh, MC, Delta T, whatever. Again. Oh, I, oh this oh. is on my website, by the way. If you just Google my name, you get to a website. You'll see a video of this being done uh, using... Uh, the standard method. You've always barreled us over. <laughs> Again, a round of applause for Lee Merrick and what he's done for science education, not just in Chicago, but across the country. Lee, thank you very much. <clears throat>